uh, upon arriving in uh, in Frankfurt 2010, sometime in December, I think it was the 17th, if not the 18th, rushing to an event in Davos and another one in Winterthur. I was staying in Schaffhausen. The cold was unbearable. By the time I finished the event in Davos and Winterthur, by the time I got to Germany side, I realized that I had an ear infection. So by the time I got to Munich, my ear was like big, you know, and it was hurting me, man. I couldn't hear. I was upset and just the cold was too much. It was almost like close to pneumonia type situation. So um, my friend Theo managed then quickly rushed me to the hospital in Munich. And I remember I got there and uh, was taken in. They checked what was going on. Then they said, okay, okay emergency, uh, take him there. And then Theo just uh, started speaking to them about who I was and blah, blah, blah. But it was literally a period of me getting in there, seeing the condition. Ten minutes later, the lady is busy drilling. Thank God for that uh, beautiful, amazing doctor. She was really good. She, she worked me out. She understood what the infection was. Uh, they sought me out. They closed up that. I was very happy. You know, I felt, whew, I can hear again, a doctor to someone, to anyone in this life is like a superhero that we don't sing about, speak about all the time, but we all know that a doctor is someone we think about forever in our lifetime, depending on the situations. And then, it so happened 2011, I was back in Europe summertime. I mean Billy felt asthma attack. Could not breathe no more. I was literally breathing from the lungs. Francisca she rushed me with her mother, went to uh, the hospital in Billy felt and they saw I couldn't breathe no more. Then they just put me straight on the oxygen, uh, got me this inhaler which was like powder, again took my details and stuff like that. I paid for these services, but the first thing they did not say to me was, where are you from, how did you get here, and all these things. They saw a patient is sick, almost dying, save him. You know, even I don't remember being asked any questions, like where are you from and stuff like that, because I just had my passport. And also, of course, when you go overseas there, you've got things like travel insurances and blah, 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 and medical planning so that if something goes wrong and stuff but the story is when you go to the hospital you're not expecting to go to a job interview whereby you'll be lectured or someone lectures you that's just not the place for that uh, doctors are literally like soldiers they are on a whole different level to a human being you protect us you save us and you don't discriminate against us so it's sad what happened, of course, uh, with our sister, the Limpopo. But I don't think she, she meant it on that level of trying to be funny, but she was funny. Uh, but that was not the right place, of course. Everybody knows that. And it's not easy for, for, for Zimbabwean right now. I understand and everybody want to take a jab. And I think that's where the issue is. So simple stuff like that could have been just avoided by uh, maybe her understanding, okay, let me take this patient there and talk to them there. Because I think the main issue was uh, when she spoke, uh, the people laughed. And then she kept on speaking. So it was now more of an entertaining. And believe me, you, anyone who whoever got sick, went to these hospitals, you see, the last thing sometimes you even need is even sometimes people talking because depending on how the pain is and stuff like that, sometimes all you just want is to be treated, you know, and then you will be like, oh, you know, my doctor is amazing and stuff. So let's not go hard on our sister. And it's stuff like this that I say to Africans, I mean, 
we can learn the love amongst each other is, is dire. You know, this hate amongst one another is bad. So you see, anything that anyone does gets to be questioned into question. And if we're an evolving African people, let's show that, you know, let's show we're evolving, not by treating each other in your main, you know. And as I said, I mean, I was treated twice in Europe and I paid for those services. They didn't care if I was an African or if I was a Zimbabwean. I was just a patient and they treated me very well. They took care of me both those times. And that's why I've got so much love for Europe, for Germany mostly, because I saw what it is in good times and in bad times I was saved. My life was saved. And here in Africa, I mean, we're fighting each other. So I want to go to the next point of man, black man, black African man. You know, why, why is everything like this? You know, some of it, we have to take some of the blame. But let's not go too hard on our sister, but our sister is to understand that when you take oath, you know, in hospitals, places like that, those are very demanding. And what you say, what you do is scrutinized on a whole different level because you're dealing with people's lives. It's life and death situations. So, yeah, I'm Sanzi. That's what's up in the Africa world. Uh, let's take it easy. Let's, let's bring more love. Not bring tensions and disorganizations because where we're going, if anyone is going to decide to see for a black nation, it's not good. It's not good.